Hi there, everyone. Welcome to our webisode where we're going to be talking about fun ingredients and how to like step up the mojo in your kitchen. I feel as a chef, I have a duty, and it is like it's my duty to teach you how to step up chef ingredients in your kitchen. So it's not just about having all the, the regular boring stuff, but some of the ingredients that we love to use and where to find them and why they're better. And I really uh, brought a few of my favorite things. So today it's kind of it's going to be an intimate little setting. It's going to be me and you, and we're going to be hanging out and we're going to be talking here at Tooth Sweet Studios. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, Casey. Thank you for coming. And yeah, uh, definitely. This is amazing. So this whole setup is in this amazing studio, and we built this. Um, we built this uh, pantry. So I'm Casey Thompson. <laughs> and I'm Susan Quinn, and we're going to have some fun. I see Casey has some nice Chardonnay here today. Well, I've been tweeting in the last like, couple days, like, what are you going to be opening with me? I'm definitely going to be opening a bottle of wine because if we're talking food and it's after 5 o'clock or even before 5 o'clock, we are having wine, especially here in the Napa Valley where we're at. So, Susan, I brought Hartwell. It's uh, Hartwell is uh, right off the Silverado Trail in the Stag Fleet District. And um, this is a 1998. Amazing. The color is wow. ridiculous, and I'm very grateful to have um, someone, oh, we've already poured it. That's beautiful. <laughs> someone living in my house that works for Hartwell. Yay. So cheers to you. Thank you, Casey. Thanks for hanging out with me. Exactly. We're going to be talking stuff. Well, I think uh, also I just want to mention everybody that's logged in right now can ask questions, just jump in, because what we, what we do and what we're doing here tonight is uh, it's all about you guys, and we want you to be able to ask your questions with Casey. Uh, we can see you. Big, you're on the big screen. And, um, and it's just uh, us. There's like a, a few of us. Yeah. You can see how many. So when you have questions, like you're talking to me, you're Thank hanging you. out with me. So jump out there. Ask your questions. If you want to see something again, I'll be more than happy to show it to you. So let's get into it. What are we doing today? Okay, so what I want to talk to you guys about is how to chef up your pantry. So, you know, we all have pantries. Everybody has to have one, right? Where you keep your spices, you keep your, your flowers, you keep your dry goods. It's an important uh, thing that we have to, to um, cook with. And you want it to be organized and you want it to be ready for you when you're ready to cook. That's an important thing. And so one of my biggest things is about organization. It's one of my uh, pet peeves, actually. And when you're in a restaurant kitchen, if things aren't organized, you just you have chaos. So your kitchen at home should run very much like that. It should be very smooth. And so this is just a basic little snapshot. I have the most crazy, almost like, I guess what you call anal retentive kitchen and pantry at home because I need to be able to find things. And when people come in and they touch things and they move things, it's, um, it's not fun to come in and not be able to, to locate the things you need, especially when you're cooking a recipe. So uh, what I've done for you today is I've pulled some of my pantry and uh, some things that I definitely feel like you need to have on hand at all times. So one of the best ways, and that, this is one of my anal retentive things, I'll quit using that word in a minute, uh, <laughs> is to have a list. And I know this seems crazy, but when you have a family, you have a family that's like three or plus more people, and people are in and out of that pantry, especially kids that are in there eating things and using things and cooking mom breakfast on Saturday morning, but then forgetting to mention to mom that she used all the baking powder and the pancake mix. And then next week you go in to make a cookie recipe for her soccer team and there is no baking powder. The best way to kind of stay on top of that is to have a list and that might seem crazy, but it will really save you in the end. So outside of your pantry door, you're just hang a clipboard or something that has a list of all the ingredients in your pantry. Oh, nice. It's just a really good way to stay on top of it. So list everything and you, put, you even provide the pen. And when something is, and I made a, it's, I mean, it's totally a little chart here, but like flour, sugar, baking powder, 
maybe when it's low, you put like, you can put a sticker or you can put a star or whatever. And then when you're out, you definitely want to have them make note of having used it last. Raise this up to the camera <laughs> so everybody can see it. But um, you see what I'm saying, and then when it's when it's out, um, and I would type this up for sure. Um, then then mom can build a shopping list off of it, and that's really what the point is. Um, so having everything in an alphabetical order is also important to all of your spices. The way I like to go about it is to have all of my spices A to Z. And I really want to have them out of all of those little jars, those little jars that have the little, you know, it's a glass jar with white letters and sometimes it's hard to read. You definitely want to get things out of those jars. So whatever your system is, whether you go to the container store and buy little containers or you go buy glass jars or whatever, My, what I like are these silver cans. These are Bean and DeLuca brand. That's definitely not cheap, I know. But what, what I did was di I did a one-time shopping spree. And I actually spread it out over time. But I spread it out so that I bought the can. And then the best way to refill those is to do it by bulk. And it's actually the freshest way to buy your dry spices. Oh. So go to the bulk section when you know, like, uh, what I'm saying is don't go back when your Aleppo pepper container is empty. Go to the bulk section, scoop out some, and then just refill your container. So don't continually buy the container. And where can you find those dry spices in bulk? Where's the best place? Well, some of the best places right now are um, like Whole Foods, if you're um, in Dallas, like Central Market. Um, we happen to be very close to a city. That's such an amazing city, San Francisco. And you can go into these stores, especially like Rainbow Grocery or something, mm. that has yeah, Rainbow Bulk. Yeah. So much of the mm -hmm. health food stores or other Health food that stores. have a big bulk collection. Things that, you know, you don't want to go somewhere where there's light traffic. You want to go somewhere where there's a lot of people oh, and a yeah. lot of turnover. So it's fresh. And not big, huge bins mm -hmm. because you want it to be fresh. Mm -hmm. And you want to smell it. You know, you want to open the container and make sure that it's something fresh. So keep it all in alphabetical order. And when something's empty, go to the bulk and buy it. It's so much cheaper and so much better. So that's one of my major, major things. Stay organized. And not only that, um, buy bulk ingredients. It's going to save you money in the end. Right. Definitely one of my all-time favorite things to shop for are Asian ingredients. And that is definitely something that is an affordable purchase. But you see us using this on Top Chef or you know, any of these like culinary shows. You see us. Um, using ingredients and you're like, what was that? What's sriracha. What's sriracha? sriracha? You don't know what sriracha is by now. <laughs> you don't know what you've been missing. <laughs> but some of the ingredients I've brought to show you are things that I feel like you should run out and purchase tomorrow. And you should always have them on hand. Even if you're doing a quick stir fry for the family, you should always be using tamari soy sauce. Mm. Tamari is chef's choice, and it's chef's choice because it's, um, it's got a lot more flavor. It's more smoky. It's more robust. It's got a lot of sort of in-your-face soy, and that's definitely um, Japanese, you know, sushi chef's choice for that perfect soy. So uh -huh. definitely, Tamari, have this on hand. The Kikomen brand, I, I love it. You know, there's other things like I've got to keep them in oyster sauce that I'm going to be showing you guys. But it's a it's a good brand. But like if you read tasting notes on the soy sauce, you're going to find that this tamari is so much better. Amazing! I just learned to be huge right now. Right? Yeah. Have you ever heard of tamari? I have, but I but I have I didn't know the difference. Well, it's it's um based off of a, a, a um it's a diluted miso, if you will. Okay. So it's also gluten free, which is amazing. So this is a um, huge hit with a lot of people. There's a lot of wheat. A little bit less sodium. I know Kikoman is high sodium. It's high sodium, and you can buy reduced sodium. Oh, right. I am all for that. I actually am. I mean, there is a lot of sodium in these ingredients. You have to watch that. Thousand milligrams mm -hmm. in a serving, which is one tablespoon, like more than your daily allotment. Oh. So, um, <laughs> take it easy on the soy. If you can go lower sodium, definitely do. I'm not even 
sure that someday even makes. Okay, yeah. that's all right with me. We use it sparingly, yeah. but definitely buy it for quality. Buy it for quality. Okay, so definitely sriracha. If you don't have this yet and your kids aren't using sriracha on their pizza, on their spaghetti, on their eggs, which I do on my scrambled eggs, um, you definitely got to get in there. Like put it on your hamburgers and your hot dogs. Sriracha is everywhere, and it's really affordable, and I buy it in a very large container because in my house, we go through it unbelievably fast. Pizza. So yeah. the pizza is perfect. Just, just a way to light up the dish just a little bit further. Um, let's see, oyster sauce. You guys, if you're putting your mushrooms in a pan and you're giving it like a little, you know, charred brownness on your mushrooms, you hit it with just, you could use water, you could use um, chicken stock, you could use a vegetable stock, and then you add just a little bit of oyster sauce. Um, it's really such an amazing flavor for your sauteed vegetables, and you really are going to feel like a chef when you're throwing this in a pan, and it comes out that sort of Chinese uh, takeout sort of like brown sauce. Okay. All you have to do is dilute it just a little bit because it's pretty thick, but it's something you should have on hand. So tonight, Asian vegetables, bok choy. And uh, we're searing some bok choy, and then we're going to hit a little oyster, oyster sauce in it and dilute it with a little water or whatever. It is super fun. Just have it in your pantry and fill it out and make something. If you're going to keep it in your pantry, I always keep stock bottles. And then when I fill yeah. them out, you open them up, refrigerate things like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't keep in the refrigerator. I kind of feel oh. like it has enough going on that it's not going to spoil. Um, I always say, like, there's enough preservatives in this yeah. <laughs> keep, keep it alive for a while. It's got some flavor going on here for sure. Definitely flavor. <laughs> Big, like, you know, chef, step up the chefness and definitely get some flavor in your dishes. One thing you'll notice about sriracha, and it's probably time to throw it out, I would have definitely used the bottle, the bottle before I ever noticed this. It does discolor when it's aged. Mm -hmm. So definitely know that. When things start to discolor, it's time to go, for sure. And like your, your dry herbs, you're going to notice dry herbs, when they start to lose their color, they need to go. When they start to lose their smell, they need to go. Mm -hmm. Sambal. I cannot live without sambal. Sambal is one of my all-time favorite things on earth. I put it on my eggs. I put it in my Indian food. I put it on my Chinese. I put it on pizza. I use it everywhere. I always add a little bit to step up a sauce or make it a little more, um, just give it depth. It's beautiful. It's uh, like sun-dried chilies that have been turned into a paste. It's so outstanding. I love it. Is that when you go to a Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. you have the hot mustard? Hot oh, mustard and the chili. Okay. It's yeah. all in those little containers. It's the same it's thing. Yeah. <laughs> they make a different one. They have a um, sambal. This one is without garlic, but they do make a sambal with garlic. So make sure you know which one you're buying. The gold label usually doesn't have garlic. It's like so kind of the garlic is so in your face. And I don't always want that. This is just straight chili. It's beautiful. Love it. And can you buy all of this at Whole Foods or some of them at specialty you uh, ethnic markets or oh, all of this at Whole Foods? Well, Whole Foods has done a really good job kind of keeping up with uh, getting you the right ingredient. Okay. Sometimes I go there and I'm a little frustrated because I'm looking for something that I can't find. But I think what's definitely interesting is that going to the ethnic markets was really fun. And mm -hmm. you're going to find that the prices are a lot lower yeah. than Whole Foods. Okay. We all know that we call it Whole Paycheck. And we call it Whole Paycheck for a reason. <laughs> and it definitely is expensive. So take the day. If your daughter doesn't check off that list, you might have to go to Whole Foods because ethnic and you might market it three times. The market is so far away. It's far away, but they're closed. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love getting yeah. in the car and saying, today we're going to go to the farmer's market. We're going to go to all of my favorite ethnic markets. We're going to go shopping and, and buying. But the thing is, these things are so inexpensive in those ethnic markets right. that you can buy bulk. Mm -hmm. I buy two and three bottles of Mopoy sweet chili sauce. I Ooh. use this for chicken wings, for ribs for so many different things. It's such an amazing product. The kids are going to love it. It's sweet. Like you could dip chicken fingers in it and, you know, mm. vegetable tempura. Fluttering right now. I know. I'm kind of it's hungry. Delicious. <laughs> you guys have you seen that before at home? This is a delicious product. 
good fried food dipped in there, but it's really good to make a, you know, sort of an Asian-inspired barbecue sauce. Uh-huh. Great ingredient, and I swear this thing is probably, the whole bottle is probably $3. Isn't that crazy? Wow, love it. Mm. So I buy several of these, and I just keep them in the pantry, and I find that they, they go fast. People grab for this when they're cooking in my house. Um, fish sauce. I know that you guys hear about fish sauce a lot, like on Top Chef and cooking shows. Fish sauce is um, not just fermented fish that's been juiced, right? But it's definitely something that you should use to finish off a. You should throw it in a you know a nice bordelaise or some sort of you know like a, like a pan gravy. It just adds a layer of depth, like this sort of sodium mm-hmm. umami flavor to the dish, whatever sauce that you're making. And it's just a beautiful thing. I really love it. But dressings, vinaigrette, yeah. perfect okay. for that. Is or, it a vinegar based kind of thing, or what is? I heard I'm one of those people that says, okay, fish sauce. What do I do? It is like take a barrel back in the day and put a bunch of like dried fish in it and just love it. <laughs> and you like, call it sauce. It's yeah, yeah. And you just call it fish sauce. Okay, that's basically what really it good. is. And it is <laughs> it's just it's a Thailand product, it's an amazing thing. It's mm-hmm. so delicious. Kikaros is my favorite brand. There's um some other brands out there. Um I actually had to search for this one just a little bit. Like, you can't find the birth at Whole Foods. Uh-huh. Um, at least okay. not the one that's near us. So I was going to ask you, well, mm-hmm. how important is brands across the board? Mm-hmm. Or are there certain products that uh, really, it, you really have a favorite brand? And Well, um, brands across the board. You know, here's kind of how I look at it. Um, I don't really feel like every time you go to the grocery store, you need to buy French's mustard. Mm-hmm. I really feel that something as widely known as yellow mustard, you do not have to buy mm-hmm. name brand. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Ketchup, I'm a little bit more um, driven by flavor. I know that a lot of people are like, Heinz, Heinz all the way, but Heinz is actually very sugary to me and doesn't have a lot of tomato flavor. Right. So I tend to find the brands that make me the happiest. And um, when I get the most flavor out of one, I tend to stick with it and hold on to it. So Tipper's happens to be my favorite fish brand because I like that it it has the exact flavor that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know when you add it to a new dish, you know you kind of intrinsically yeah. know what it's going to do. Absolutely. So, and I don't want like this offering to give it a yeah. flavor. <laughs> and then when someone says, it had this flavor that I can't explain, and I'm going, well, I can't explain it either because I really didn't like that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like yeah. that brand. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, fish sauce. You need it in so many areas. Mm-hmm. From vinaigrette to soft finishing and things like that. It's perfect ingredient. Now, I always like to have a little curry. This is curry paste on the hands and not curry powder. Yeah. So all you need to make a, uh, to make a dish, say we're going to have curried shrimp tonight, it's easy because you're keeping, you're keeping rice on hand. All you have to do is cook a little rice. You brought some shrimp home, maybe an onion and, and a couple other ingredients, pineapple even if you want. You need a can of coconut milk and you add it to this. And you dilute it out by whisking it, yeah. and this creates, you want to throw some chicken in here or some shrimp in here and just let it poach and cook, add some cilantro, and you've got a meal. This is such an amazing, a mafoy, again, it's the same as this, the same brand, and I love this brand. So it's mafoy, M-A-E-P-L-O-Y. Mafoy. So it's, it comes in this container. And it's sealed in a bag. Look at that. They make red, they make green, they make yellow. So it depends on the spiciness that you like. It's just, it's already right. ready. It's moist. You're kidding. You know, it's so nice. I walk by and miss this stuff. And if you didn't tell me. you got to dig around in those sections. <laughs> you got to dig around. you got to look in the Asian sections. I mean, this really is yeah. ready to go. It's got the lemongrass, the mm. garlic, the oh my gosh. in here. Do you put a little corner off and squeeze it out? or. Yep. I do, actually, because it kind of keeps everything still. Yeah. Have a little corner, squeeze out the amount that you want, roll it back up, keep it in there, and refrigerate it. And the reason why is because, you know, you've broken the seal, and it is mm-hmm. it has moisture in it. Yeah. So you don't want to keep it on your shelf. So, Mopsoy, curry night, easy, made easy. Mm. 
chef trick right there. Amazing. Just I'll amazing. that out for you. Very cool. See that? Beautiful. Um, some of my last favorite ingredients, mirin, which I love. Like, I, this takes dressing to a new height. It has sugar in it. So you get that sort of vinegar, sugar, all in one. Mirin is a beautiful product. Love that. That's a Kikkoman product. Look at there. And you're a Texas chef. But I do have a lot of Asian things here. Too. It happens to be one of my, I've traveled to Thailand. I love Thailand. And um, I was the executive chef of a Pan-Asian restaurant for um, a few years in yeah. Dallas. So I actually... Um, did you experiment through the restaurant or at home? Or did it kind of just happen after your trip? Or Well, I did. You know, it actually, the restaurant was before the trip. The trip came after. I just... I've always been infatuated with Asian cooking. Mm. It's so clean and so vibrant, and they really um, yeah. love the ingredients for what they are and, and try not to, what I always say as a chef, don't muck it up. Yeah. <laughs> I always say, like, you try to add too many things, and it just like gets crazy. Coco Chanel, take one thing off. <laughs> Coco Chanel, take one thing off. Go out. Take one, one thing. I love that. That's exactly yeah. whatever you think you're going to cook tonight. See, that's one thing. When I'm cooking with other people, they go, well, I, what about this, 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 and this? And I go, I don't really think you need the this or the this. Yeah. Like, just keep it, why can't it be something beautiful? They mm -hmm. try to just, I think they try to chef it up too much. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. happens is you end up over chefing. Right. And that happens on Top Chef, too. I mean, that really does happen to us. They go, you know, Maybe I didn't like the texture of this, or something happened to the dish, and that's definitely not what you want. Yeah. Too many. yeah. Stay in control when you it's cooking. Panko breadcrumbs. Panko, I'm heading back over there. No, panko is just something that you should have. You should always have this the kids. Fried shrimp, onion rings, chicken breast. It's one of those beautiful things you have in the kitchen. You pull it out. It's crunchy. Um, it's perfect, and it's cheap. So you have these things in your kitchen. You could be making curry and <laughs> crispy chicken and all these things for cheap. And then when you want to make ribs, you go buy ribs and you take such as this sauce, small toy, and you just step it up a notch. You know, you add a little barbecue sauce and make a delicious uh, rib. So it's expensive enough that you can experiment and buy a bottle and try different things and dip it in. And it's that's right. And you kind of expand and you can use it in the cooking and use it in your dressing. You can use it. Absolutely. It makes a great dip. Mm. Yeah, it's thick for kids and it's kind of like a sugary kind of. Um, and that, yes. <laughs> there's a lot of kids that are eating sushi mm -hmm. and, you know, they're oh, yeah. really stepping it out there and, and eating different ingredients. So I really feel like kids would like something like this, especially for their chicken, you know, their chicken strips. Okay, I want to get hit a few of my other ingredients that I love to have in my house. Um, these are my like chef secrets and things that I um, would like to share with the world. I really kind of feel like El Paso, which is this brand here, makes some of the best tomato sauce. I know this is like a strange um, find, but it's different than your... Um, you know, Constantino brand or mm. what, what is that brand? Oh, you know, am I saying it incorrectly? I no, know. you know, I, I know the picture, but I can't think of the name. Constantino or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody else got out something. But this, this is, is a new tomato sauce. This is a good product. You know why? It comes with a little bit of spice. And I, mm -hmm. as you can see, I definitely am not scared of spice. But okay. um, this, I keep on stock. I like a little spice in my food, so when I want something tomato sauce brand, set it up just a little bit. This is a perfect brand, and we when we do chilaquiles, we use this in my house on Sunday mornings yeah. to wake up the to wake up the guests. Chilaquiles, like five tortilla chips and eggs and tomato sauce and cheese and cilantro and crema. Oh, yeah. So if you ever want to come over okay. to my house, and we'll have some eggs together, and then I'll put that you. But you can't have chilaquiles without having a super hot sauce. And this is my favorite brand. It's cheap. Mm, and you know this. Mrs. Renfro, this lady, like, she, there's a picture of her. She's super cute. She's this little old lady. And she's out of Fort Worth, Texas. And it says that this brand's been around since 1940. And it is habanero salsa. They also make a ghost pepper salsa. That would be hard to find. Your sauce off. Yes. 
And um, I've seen this one, and it is really spicy and awesome and delicious. It's not I so like, hot, but the flavor. Oh, the flavor is so just it gets you the Yeah, best. that is one of the best charged products. I always say yeah. keep these things on your shelf yeah. and just come over and you just need a quick little pop this oh, open. Yeah. Always like just like a snapple. You guys ever do that with your oh, people? Yeah. Just take your bottle without doing this weird stuff. So pop the bottle and pour it into a bowl and then some tortilla chips. Boom. Then you've got guest snacks, right? Love this. This yeah. is one of my favorite brands ever. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to show you one thing. Like also if guests come over and you need to pop out a snack. Always keep some cheese on hand and these fun little crackers. These are very, are these indigenous to California? I have seen them at a no. fine grocery. <laughs> this is and some of Richmond, BC. British, BC, British Columbia. British Columbia, okay, so this is well, not a local brand. You're your way into local California. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, it does say made in Canada right there. These happen to be some of the best crackers I've had mm -hmm. in forever. And so here in the valley, in Napa Valley, you will see these on, we'll put out some cheese and we're going to put out these crackers. It always happens. Green cooked crisps. You should just always have those on hand. It's an inexpensive kind of cool cracker to have. I like a homemade, uh, you know, yes. when you were a kid and you would have um, raisin bread. Yeah. Uh, so so have raisin that's bread. like raisin bread. It tastes like. This is fig and olive. Yeah. It's and such, and there's like little chewy pieces in you fig and olive. Cheese or anything. It's so good. You don't good. even need them. I love these. Yeah. It's Always great. at my house, you're going to find several boxes of these, whether it's cranberry or just the, the raisin and people tea. stop by, you can make breakfast, you can make a curry dish, you can make a curry. I've got all the late night snacks. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Late, late night yeah. snacks. That happens when the wine gets boiling in, in Cali. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I want to talk to you guys about olive oil because I feel like this is a it's a huge thing right now. You read about it in uh, like Cook's Illustrator or you see it on TV and you see chefs talking about like what's going on with olive oil. And I really kind of feel like um, all the research that I've done has has told me that what we need to know about olive oil is that it is a live product and it does have an expiration. Mm -hmm. And olive oil is actually best consumed at press and you're right at the source, which is not very doable for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I really kind of feel like in California or the United States, um, I recently read an article that was talking about Italian products coming over to the United States and how they're not as fresh as we um, think that they are. So they actually come with a expiration date and a lot of us don't notice that expiration date. On all of them, I haven't seen it. You, yeah, you don't notice it, right? Okay, well, there's like these little funny stamps on the back. Like, so you kind of have to look best, you know, harvest yeah, date. very tiny. <laughs> it's so specific. Like, what is that stamp? What do those numbers mean? But what's happening is that olive oil is coming over from Italy. Not only is it being bottled and stored over there and shipped over here, usually on a boat. Mm -hmm. And then it takes so many days to get to us, and, you know, weeks to get to us. And then by the time it does get to us, it sits in our grocery store warehouse and then it goes on the shelf. And then by the time you're actually getting it, the olive oil is no longer good. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I have noticed is um, California brands are really stepping it up. They're not only like producing really amazing olives, because you notice all in the valley there's olive trees yeah. kind of everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they're really pressing beautiful olive, olive oil. Well, this is a brand I know and love McAvoy. Mm -hmm. And this is a new one for me. So this is this a this is more, more affordable, affordable though, probably. More affordable. This is almost impossible for me to afford. It. That's more of a drizzle this than a drizzle. drizzle. And this is what okay. I use it for. I keep, I keep it out in a, not in the sun, make sure you're not setting it in like your kitchen windows. Keep it definitely in a darker little area because you don't want it to spoil or go rancid. And do you want to put it over your stove? Or? No, definitely not over your stove. Stay away from the heat. I see that a lot. People definitely. have it on the stove, in the sun, or over the stove, no, and there's that. heat and sunlight. You don't want that. Right? You don't want that. So this is a little more affordable. Yeah, yeah. Spoiled. 
you're more affordable, you're more expensive, you'll find this in specialty stores. This is your drizzle. But definitely, I have read articles that are saying that California olive oils are really good. Yeah. And we need to be paying more attention. These two brands specifically are exactly what you're finding in Mediterranean olive oil. Right. In Italy. Wow. Which is great. Yes. I love that. And so, I think it's virgin and press and this uh, first press. Cool press. And extra yeah. press. And all this. <laughs> so, you know, definitely it is about how the, the olives are treated. Um, cold press is under a different, um, it, it's more, it's like, think of like a nigiri um, um, sake and how it's, it's treated and held mm -hmm. and um, we kind of have like one that has more shelf life, one that has less shelf life. Um, you definitely want to be buying the extra virgin, which is um, a special press that it holds well. It's lighter in flavor, not yeah. doesn't have a lot of particle in it. Mm. So then it burns a little less and okay. like, you know, saves pressure for you and lighter for you. It's just a really perfect foil. It's really delicious. So remember these two brands. You'll find them everywhere. California Olive Oil, Olive Ranch, which is local Sacramento, and then the yeah. Olive Ranch, which is local as well. But delicious. So these two, some of my favorite products. I, you know, and I always say, like, when we're building a pantry and you want to have good products in there, but you don't want to break the bank, you know, spread it out over time, buy certain things, kind of keep Keep things in stock, but build your pantry as you go. So if you want to get some base items, like I really don't think you need to buy Aleppo pepper. If you're not using Aleppo pepper, then that's certainly not something you need to have in your pantry. <laughs> you <laughs> don't mentioned that earlier. What is Aleppo pepper? Uh, well, it's and what, how would you use it? I haven't heard of that one. Uh, Turkish food, so mm -hmm. like basically um, it's a beautiful kind of smoky uh, red pepper, and um, it's just a beautiful little pepper that um, chefs are going to use in certain ways. So like I wouldn't worry about this if I were you guys, but um, I have back here, and you'll, and you'll notice, a chili powder and a cumin, this is Tone? I've never even heard oh, oh, yeah. This is just like bulk brand. Yeah, maybe from Costco. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. I buy things like this. This is what you're going to use at home and you're going to use more. So don't worry about the Aleppo pepper. Worry about things that you yeah. use. Buy them in bulk. I use, because we at home when I make tacos or something like that, I, I make my own taco mix. I don't buy the little packages. Yes. So these things in bulk, um, you know, throwing things in your chili, you're going to make chili at home, definitely this. Cumin goes in so many different dishes. If you're going to make your own hummus, which you should be. Ooh. Cumin. We need just a lot of cumin. So I'd buy things like this in bulk. Yeah. And then just, you're going to use them. And it's actually better for you, right, than the package? Absolutely. Um, the package has other kind of additives and oh, sugars salt. and things. And salt. And salt. Okay. Which... You know, I was, I'm shopping right now. It's really funny because it's harvest season here in Napa. And I'm shopping for a lot of snacks for my significant other to have at the winery yeah. that you're just kind of eating. And I'm buying all these things. They have to be kind of like quick foods, pantry stocked items, like things, you know, things that he can heat up with hot water. And so ultimately, I, as I'm purchasing all of this stuff, I'm thinking, this is loaded with salt. Like all of these things are loaded with salt. You have to watch your salt intake and you have to remember that a lot of these things have a lot of sodium and you need to balance it out. Mm -hmm. So make sure that if you're going to use certain things that you balance it out in other ways. So if you can save in a taco package yeah. and making your own, you definitely need to do that. And think so about how cheaper. much. So much cheaper to buy bulk and just Better and cheaper. Time. And it turns out to be more convenient because you don't run out of packages. You have this big thing. And you're not uh, running to that store like, oh, I want to make tacos. I have everything, but yeah. I don't have that taco packet. Yeah, that's totally happened to my mother more than once. <laughs> Love you, Mom. Um, so All I right. just wanted to rate a couple ingredients for you. Chicken stock. I know not everyone can make chicken stock, but you should be making your own. Um, I Every time I clean a chicken, I take the bones, throw it into a bag, mm -hmm. and I have scrap carrot, celery, leek, onion, anything, I throw it into a bag and throw it in the freezer. It doesn't matter if it's not super fresh. Like freezing it is fine. When you're ready, you take all that frozen stuff, you dump it into the pot with the chicken bones, and you make chicken stock. Mm -hmm. So... I know you've heard that over and over, but if you are going to buy box stock, my favorite choice is Swanson, and 
uh, Chef's Illustrated actually did a taste test with this and 10 other brands, and I appreciated this because I really did feel like they do the best in, in flavor. And you can also, I mean, when you're pouring it out, you notice there's like cloudiness yeah. and weirdness. You know, like that doesn't look it's like a little chicken. fat, but it's real. It's like if you made your own chicken stock. Chicken stock. That's what yeah, it's like. I like the it flavor too. is there. This is a great one. It's yes. always by less sodium. So mm -hmm. Swanson to me makes the best chicken stock. If you're gonna buy box, and believe me, I have this in my pantry because there's times I go and I I need chicken stock and mine's frozen or whatever it is, and I just want to do something fast. And so this is the best product. Hi, do you have a quick question about this? Please. Very important question mm -hmm. for me. Um, when you open this chicken stock, because I love that you can close it back up, right. then how long does it, does it last? You know, I, I want to believe that everyone understands kind of, it's like the, the lesser ver kind mm -hmm. of rule okay. of thumb where we all say four days you should be throwing things out. You know, you yep. definitely okay. want to keep leftovers only three, four days is time to go. But on something like this, I think that they've gone to great lengths. And by that I don't mean preservatives, but they have gone to great lengths to make sure that this stays fresher longer, mm -hmm. whether that is the way that they, they chill it fast or that they've created this box that you can hold it in you know, for a longer period of time. I wouldn't keep this for over a week. Okay. I think a week and we need to get out. what I wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> a week and I read that entire there. box and I found it. Keep this in the I know everyone does that. Yeah. Um, I definitely. Yeah, good. Okay. That sounds great. Like the rule of leftovers. Move on. Yeah, it's something yeah, that's a little cute. Who's going to eat spaghetti? spaghetti? No. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, I, I do know people that might question that. Like, can I, could I eat this? <laughs> it's a week old. That's so gross. Cut it out. Thank move you. on. You got it. So Swanson, one of my favorite brands. Mm -hmm. um, some last things. Always have a jar of salted capers and not the ones that come in the pickly weird brine. Always have salted capers on hand. Make sure that when you prep with them, you give them a good rinse and you knock a lot of that salt off. Um, this is a, a beautiful brand, which I also wanted to tell you guys all the pasta, dry pasta, dry pasta, the Rusticala de Abruzzo, Abruzzo, and this is my favorite pasta brand ever, ever, ever. So I buy a double zucchini, and uh, it's so easy to just slap a uh, tomato sauce on it. I mean, there's a lot of times as a chef you don't have time to cook. Like, you don't have time yes. to cook at home. When you're starving, you come home and you just want to eat. These things, you have multiple bags of so pasta. So chefs are real people. We are real people. Yeah. I mean, it's a matter of and I did bring flour to talk about how to make pasta. We'll talk about that another day. But I'm thinking that this same brand also like makes squiddy pasta, and it's really, really good. Oh, good! Oh, it's good. And then the yes, it's beautiful. This is such a great product. So, what would you put? What kind of sauce would you put up? I know this isn't a sauce show. No, no, I'm dying to know. Cream and seafood. I could definitely like a cream squiddy. Okay. I can, or a butter sauce or something, mm. you know, where you mm. have like, you use the clam jus and then you add a little butter and some herbs. That's just so perfect for, for squidding. But you can do this at home. You buy clams on the way home, you hit it with a little white wine, and then yeah. all of a sudden you have a beautiful, amazing pasta dish. So, this is my favorite pasta. You can see I have different types, shapes, and textures going on. And I can buy, you know, some of their uh, OPSA and things like uh -huh. that. So if you're going to be making tomato sauce at home, San Marzano tomatoes, you must. It is a beautiful tomato. It has a lot of flavor. Um, they're basically specifically made for tomato sauce making. So this is a beautiful product. Have several cans of this of crushed of whole of sauce on hand um, with your sauce day. And if you just don't have time, one of my favorite pasta sauces to have on hand is Rouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Browse, right? Rose? Yeah, whatever. So this is one of my favorite pasta sauces, and it's spicy. It has a lot of flavor. Um, if you're just going to open it up and you don't have a lot of time, you dump that on top of your pasta. It is perfect. It doesn't even require beef or, you know. You don't have to doctor it. 
I say no doctoring. This That's is a beautiful, great. beautiful brand. So definitely shop this. And I bought this at Safeway. So that means you can find it anywhere, right? So if you're gonna make your own, if you're gonna, if you have no time and you just need to pour it out, always have these pastas on hand, these things, perfection. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, all good stuff. Like anchovy peeps and tomato peeps, all of these things. Um, really, really good to have on hand. I always say that these things will help beef up a sauce. Um, my tomato sauce for, for spaghetti is really beefed up with a lot of tomato paste because it's concentrated with really good tomatoes and it takes the sauce so much further. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. the price of some of these you know, um, these pastas, yeah. you're going to have to find these at like Whole Foods. So this is a, a pasta brand that to have two of these on hand is probably going to cost you around $15. Um, they're good though. Like if you're going to have bulk pasta, it's good to have, you know, a dry bulk pasta. It's good to have one of quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, pasta is it's simple. It's a noodle and a sauce. Basically, and yeah. so if you're not going to be making your own, go ahead and step this up. This is probably this is chefing your your pantry up just a little bit. Um, and they look so beautiful. The packages and these little rivets in the top are so it's pretty. Tequila. It's tequila and it's so nice. My daughter, my 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 middle daughter, is a office supply. She has a fetish. With office supplies. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about uh, pantry fetishes? Do you do you look in your pantry and say, "Oh, it's beautiful," you know? Absolutely. And, <laughs> and I really feel like you getting things drive. out of packages and putting them in containers ah. is one of my uh -huh. like. I just love doing it. I don't. You have that, that with your flour and sugar and raw sugar, right? You can see here that I feel things that you use in bulk. If you get them out of the packages, mm -hmm. it's really important. Um, so having it's really beautiful things that you approach a lot are very important, such as flour, sugar, raw sugar, um, even my baking powder and baking soda. These are the two ingredients we go to the most in the kitchen. So why not have them in something distinct and labeled and ready to go instead of getting well sealed? Yeah, and well sealed. Yeah. Yes. Instead of unrolling that package and having like you're digging through multiple packages, it's just better to have a jar where you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's really how I feel like you like you should definitely run your kitchen um, in a restaurant. And that's how you should run your kitchen at home. It's mm -hmm. time saving. It um, helps keep your sanity. I think really, you know, we're in such a rush these days. Believe me, and you know having. Having some organization in your life is never a bad thing. Um, I just really want people to feel like they can do this at home. Like you can chef up your your situation for sure. And it doesn't have to happen all at once. You don't have to go to the grocery store and feel like you have to buy four or $500 worth of stuff. It's things that you can build over time. You're not going to use an entire bag of lentils, but... They so conveniently make things with seals on them mm -hmm. that you can just zip up and keep. You always want to have a polenta, a lentil, a, a rice, and some pasta on hand. And that, that and keeping the list is going to help you stay organized. And that way you're not running to the store every single day wondering how, you know, what you're going to have for dinner and how you're going to make it happen and what do you have at home. Mm -hmm. and, to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of phone apps these days that help keep you organized. Uh, and if you if you're that person, which we are in the the iPhone world right now, in the smartphone world, um, people are just keeping their whole pantry on their phone. Mm -hmm. I love that shopping mm -hmm. list and you know. to shop. Like, yeah. I think that would be such a cool thing to have. How about um, organization? As far as do you go alphabetical or flavor based, or you know? Well, like we can have a section, category uh -huh. for sure. So when I enter and I know I'm heading for spices, I have a spice rack. And so every spice I need is on there. And then it goes as far as if it's not in an alphabetical order or same container, I break it off into sections. Like now here is my Asian section. I've got all my Asian spices, my, you know, uh, nori, my, you know, uh, uh -huh. toasted sesame and things yeah. like that. 
everything is together. Mm-hmm. And then I've got an Indian section, and then, you know, it just goes on Mediterranean. And so when I go in for tomato sauce, I go in and everything is facing forward, and all my bottles are in a line. And I know that seems crazy, but when you go in there and you're searching and you can't find anything, um, that makes you mad, and that's no way to enjoy cooking. Mm-hmm. Definitely believe you've got to have organization. But there's, there's certain products that help make your life easier. Um, one that I've definitely found and love is this Pam sort of baking with the flour spray. I don't know if you guys have seen Flour spray? It. Well, it's a baking. It's a well, is it the same Pam I've always, my mom used? Well, like it? this, this olive oil. Oh, this so is what different. you would use to okay. spray on your casserole pan. And then this is the one that you would use to spray on your cake pan. So it's a product that I think is amazing. You spray it, and it's like when you have to melt the butter and butter the pan, and then you, you know, shake the flour on and dump it out. That's what it is, and it's it really your cakes pop out. Everything's great. Saves you a step. Life can be so much easier. Very nice. So many fun things. Um, one last thing that I definitely wanted to tell people was that. You know, I think a lot of people, have, they know now that this is not what we should be buying, this iodized salt, and this has its place in the world. But there are recipes that call for this sort of uh, cooking salt, this sort of baking salt, where it's weighable, it's not kosher, it doesn't have that, that, grain, that grain texture. So you can buy sea salt in the same granular sort of, you know, I just want, I would rather people not use the iodized than use the sea salt. It's in the same the same texture. So when you're making a recipe and you need a scoop of salt instead of doing the kosher, because you, if they do weigh differently from kosher to the um, like sort of grain of the salt. So buy the sea salt and use this in your baking. I think it's amazing. Two great baking products right here. Yeah, boy, I'm all over the place well, today. I've been drinking more than you. You need to have a sip. Oh goodness. Thanks. <laughs> And you know what? I think that on the next show, I think that we need to be talking. I mean, we've got all these wonderful products, and then now you guys are going to be getting organized in your own kitchen. You're going to be out there shopping and finding things um, that make your life easier. I really think that this is a good list of ingredients, of, of basic items to have. Then I think what's next to get your list going, remember this, so we've made our lives easier by being organized. So the question is, why not iodized salt? Why not iodized salt? Uh, yeah, and that was, that was my question, like, you know, why is the difference? Right. Okay, I have a question from the audience. Well, iodized salt has been treated differently. Um, it's different from kosher. It's is different. iodine added to it? Iodine is added to it. And that's old-fashioned health reasons. Yeah. yeah, and almost it's like almost like a non-caking ah, uh, ingredient. Okay. And so you just don't need that in your cooking. And so I know because, believe me, my parents used it, my grandparents used it. And then I think times have come, like, they, they, call, they used to call it a necessary nutrient. Yeah. I don't really know that yeah. that's... That's not no, no longer necessary. Not necessary. We're getting it in our beef, and we have plenty of rub now. We can rock and rub. So stay green and just stay away from this. Now, if you want to use this in cleaning solutions, I'm not putting it like it's not in a bleach category, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if you want to use clean this, your cups, clean your copper pot. Clean your copper pot. This is what you want to use. But you can, like, this is perfect. I use this in baking. So use your sea salt. Um, it's just evaporated seawater brought down into the, the grain. Yeah, that was, that was a question from the PA Dennis. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Earlier online. Yeah. Good to hear from you, Kate. Where's she from? She's a uh, just, just Kate. Yeah. Like <laughs> Kate, do you like Kate, cooking? Can, yeah. we, can we hear you, Kate? Oh, she's got to do it. Oh, cute. Oh, oh, excellent. Very cool. That's the power ah. of the bag, right? Well, Very thank cool. you. Thank you, Kate from Columbia. Definitely. That's amazing. So, yeah, all good stuff. I just, I kind of feel like um, people see a lot of ingredients on these shows and they wonder what certain things are. And believe me, next show, when we cook with some of these ingredients and we're just grabbing from the pantry, I really want to show you guys some different products that you can use, such as agar agar or, you know, like 
We can be using um, Irish moss to thicken things, like carrageenan. And we'll be talking about these items that you see chefs use and you just don't have a clue as yeah. to what they are or what they're for. And I think it's important that um, you know that you can buy these things at home and you can keep them in your kitchen and use them. Yeah. So that'll be a fun, I think that'll be a fun webisode. Um, hope that you guys come back and that you learn something today. And I hope that whatever wine you opened today was an amazing wine and that you had some really good dinner tonight. I know that that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we should thank, uh, we should thank uh, um, um, uh, Kate and uh, we should thank uh, Leona. Yes. All right, we have Leonard and Kate online watching us now and texting in their questions. And uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa. And uh, Melissa. And Michael Sintis. Nice. And uh, nice. Robert uh, asked uh, ask about. And Robert. So yeah. Michael, Robert, Melissa, Kate. <laughs> and Leonard. And Leonard. <laughs> I think so. And I saw all of you guys on Twitter, so thanks so much. And next time we'll be cooking and eating and drinking. We'll, we'll get you some webcam. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.